To many people, fat bikes are a type of bike reserved strictly for riding on snow in the winter time. They're seen as slow, heavy, and frankly, not very fun to ride. Despite that, my primary bike for many years has been a fat bike and, to the surprise of many, I've managed to have a lot of fun on it. In fact, riding fat bikes is what inspired me to get back into mountain biking and even to start this whole YouTube thing. Given the many fat bike related videos I've made, I often get the question, does a fat bike make a good mountain bike? In this video, I'm gonna answer that question, so let's get into it. First things first, let's take a quick look at that question being asked. When someone is asking if a fat bike works as a mountain bike, they're typically after the mythical quiver killer. Whether it's due to budget constraints, lack of storage space, or just not wanting to deal with a bunch of maintenance, they want one bike to handle all of the riding they do. For someone who lives with a significant amount of snow, that means a fat bike might be the only option. While one do-it-all bike sounds great in theory, you're always going to end up compromising in one way or another. That's why bikes built to do everything end up being not particularly great at anything. It's not that they're bad or not fun in all situations, it's just that purpose-built bikes tend to do a better job at whatever discipline they were designed for. I know this is kind of a tangent, but it's important to understand when answering the question of fat bikes and mountain biking. The majority of fat bikes are built for riding on all kinds of snow trails, from groomed single track to unpacked roads to post-hold multi-use trails. That usually means riding at slower speeds, with gentler grades, and on less technical terrain. Yeah, snow can be tricky to ride in, but even the most formidable rock gardens get easier when covered in snow. Those three things are pretty much all the exact opposite of the modern mountain bike design, which is often geared toward faster, steeper, and more technical riding. While I'm obviously going to answer the question with yes, I'm also saying it with the caveat that a purpose-built mountain bike is probably going to do a better job, whatever better means to you, at being a full-on mountain bike. That aside, why do I think a fat bike makes a great mountain bike? First off, you can roll over anything. Rock gardens, off-camber stuff, creek beds, sand pits, it's all rideable. Sometimes your tire contact patch matters even more than how much suspension travel you have, and in those cases, a fat bike is not only more fun, but often it's faster as well. There's also this really fun effect you get from a high volume tire that makes it easy to pop off of rocks and roots and get some extra time in the air. On the uphill side, fat bikes are incredible at climbing despite their weight. The tires give you loads of traction, so as long as you've got the gears and the legs for it, you can kind of just sit and spin your way up steep and loose stuff. Rolling terrain is also fun because the big tires maintain a ton of momentum that can carry you through a descent and up the next hill. That momentum can also lead to faster times on downhills in general because once they're rolling, they want to keep going and going fast. Fat tires can also be a huge advantage for mountain bike riders in more deserty areas where the trail alternates between rock slabs and sandy soils and washes. Instead of trying to keep your tire from digging in and sending you over the bars, the wide tires let you float on over without any problems. The final reason I think a fat bike makes a great mountain bike is because they're not restricted to a single wheel and tire size. This speaks more to the quiver killer point I brought up earlier. A second wheel set is cheaper and takes up less space than an entire bike, but it can totally transform the way your bike rides. While I still enjoy riding fat tires on dirt, I'm also a massive fan of 29 plus tires, and I run them a lot in the summer on my fat bike frame. It essentially gives me two different bikes that I can use depending on what trail, route, or season I'm riding in. All of these points sound great, but of course there are some things to keep in mind. Fat bikes are generally heavier in total weight, but more importantly in rotational weight. With more weight to start or stop turning due to the bigger, heavier tires, stronger legs, more endurance, and more powerful brakes are crucial. 
It's one reason you don't often see fat bikes in cross country races or on ultra endurance courses. They're not going to be as quick to accelerate and will be more taxing on your body over time. If you're not racing though, then this probably doesn't matter to you. Another point against fat bikes comes down to geometry. As I said, fat bikes are designed for slower speeds and tamer terrain. In general, they have a pretty conservative geometry with steeper angles, longer chain stays, and a host of other measurements to make the bike easier to handle in winter conditions. Basically, fat bikes have always been a few years behind the curve of modern geometry, but that's kind of by design. That said, geometry has changed quickly and there are quite a few good options now that buck this trend and are more in line with the progressive cross-country bikes or even the light trail bikes of today. While not super progressive, the additional benefits of the fat tires make the bike way more capable than you'd think from just looking at the geometry. The final thing that can be a downer to your fat mountain bike dreams is something called Q-Factor. This measurement is basically just how far apart your feet are and some people can have all sorts of problems with the wider stance fat bikes inherently have. I'm a lucky one that isn't bothered at all, but if you are, I'd say take a look at the Panorama Torngat or the Otso Voitech before ruling fat bikes out completely. They're both able to run normal fat tires, but have a much narrower stance due to some clever design features. Fat bikes have really only been around with mass availability for a, about a decade and in my opinion, they're just coming out of their awkward teenage years. Their basic standards like axle width have mostly been ironed out, they have a couple solid options for suspension, and their geometry has finally started to evolve to make them enjoyable year round. I've had a wide variety of fat bike experience. I've ridden them in all forms from fully rigid to full suspension. While a typical mountain bike might be objectively better at fulfilling its mountain bike duties, a fat bike shouldn't be underestimated. They stick like Velcro to sketchy trail surfaces, they let you ride any time of year, and they bring a fun factor you just don't get on a normal bike. So if you're asking yourself if a fat bike can be a good mountain bike, my answer for you is a resounding you betcha. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of fat bikes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.